like you're trying to breathe down and behind you. Breathe into your lower back, breathe into your butt, and that'll fill up your obliques, your lower ribs. It expands your rib cage like bellows. Hi, I'm Draven Gray with The Unleashed Singer, where we combine over 50 years experience as professional singers, songwriters, producers, performers, and I could go on to help you become the singer you've always wanted to be. So, do you ever run out of breath? Oh, well, do you run out of breath a lot while singing? Maybe it's certain songs that you're running out of breath on or certain phrases in certain songs. Well, here are the top three things to do to keep you from running out of breath while singing. The first is make sure you're breathing from the right spot. Okay, now the right spot being, I'm sure you've heard a lot, you know, sing from the diaphragm. Yeah, okay. While that makes sense, it doesn't tell you how to sing from the diaphragm. Well, I have seen a lot of, uh, especially rock teachers and people more contemporary styles teach, you know, to breathe in through the stomach and then push down and out for power, push down and out to exhale and, and to make that phonation, make that sound. Um, I actually had a couple of yoga instructors as students who um, they they didn't like that idea. They said there's too much weight on the pelvic floor already. They're not going to do that because it's unhealthy. And then, you know, on further investigation and looking up other styles, I found sticking out your stomach doesn't do a whole lot for your breathing. It has nothing to do with your diaphragm. And pushing down and out, while it doesn't brace your core or it braces your core, it really doesn't have a lot to do with what's happening in the diaphragm either. It's kind of a roundabout way to get to the diaphragm. So what I found for them, uh, looking up and researching different ways of breathing while singing, was what's called appoggio, or to lean in Italian. And I found it through the teacher Michael Trimble up in Seattle. Um, really cool guy in his 80s. He's been teaching forever. He learned it from Pavarotti. And it turns out this is the same breathing technique that, you know, Shippa, Cetrazzini, uh, Le Lehman, um, the, the, they all use these, Lily Lehman, sorry. They all, they all use these, uh, that's just a lot of famous singers. Think of that. A lot of famous singers, a lot of famous teachers in classical use this specific technique of leaning the breath. And what that means is you're leaning the breath down and behind you, like you're trying to breathe down and behind you, breathe into your lower back, breathe into your butt, and that'll fill up your obliques, your lower ribs. It expands your rib cage like bellows. Breathe down and behind you, which actually brings in the stomach a little bit. And then I guess you can think of it as kind of bracing the core just a little bit. It's not a lot, but when you breathe down and behind you, that's the point. You breathe and fill up from the bottom up in your lungs instead of where you're just kind of filling up very shallowly or very shallow. So down and behind you. And then you lean weight, like leaning on a desk, like leaning, um, let's say if you hold some books there, um, you're leaning weight into the diaphragm or through the sternum or through the solar plexus, and that's your breath. <sighs> so when I'm singing, hey, that loudness and that throttle or mass in the voice comes from the diaphragm because I'm leaning into the diaphragm. I'm singing through that spot. The way to do that, the, the way to get that feeling is first off, try to breathe down and behind you. Try to breathe down and behind you. Then I want you to sigh and lean weight into the solar plexus to release. <sighs> okay, what I want you to do to get that feeling, let's do a, a hist S. Let's, let's breathe down and behind you and then push out an S and try to get that pressure from the push into the diaphragm, so behind your upper abs. So that's down here. It may feel subtle at first. You may actually be tightening your upper abs. Just know that tightening doesn't do a whole lot, but I would rather you be tense there than up here in the neck. It's better to be tense in your lower, ab I'm sorry, your upper abs and your, your diaphragm area and your solar plexus than to be tense up in the neck. And anytime you feel extra pressure in the neck, or I should say extra tension in the neck or in the throat, put that down 
back into the upper abs. That's a much better place to be. Although I'd rather you try to get that hysteres behind the upper abs into the diaphragm. That's really where you want to be. Okay. From there, the second thing you can do is treat your breaths like lyrics. So you always have enough breath to finish a phrase. Okay, so treat it like lyrics. Actually put the breaths within your lyrics. Put them in there so you're never running out of breath. If you notice at the end of a phrase you keep running out of breath, where can you sing that? Where, where can you sing a breath? Or you can put that in your lyrics so that you are able to finish that phrase. Uh, oh, one great thing is to maybe watch your favorite artist um, or watch whatever song you're trying to do. Watch the, the original artist try to sing that song live and figure out where they breathe in the lyrics. I think you'll be surprised because sometimes that means you have to cut off a word, uh, maybe a word or two. Usually at the beginning of a phrase, uh, you'll hear them take a breath. Um, sometimes there's overlapping parts or parts in the recording that are just butted up against each other and you don't hear a breath. So watch it live. Sometimes they skip that to take a breath and then they come in a little late or they start on a different word, and cut off some words. You got to remember that live is really more about the energy of the room and the experience of the show than it is about getting the song right. Okay, don't be afraid to cut off words just to breathe so you can make it to the end of the phrase. You know, for example, uh, Brendan Urie in Panic of the Disco. I write Sins, Not Tragedies, that live show. Uh, in a live show. Get that down. In a live show. You know, if you think the original, it's, uh, what a beautiful wedding. What a beautiful wedding. It says a bridesmaid to a waiter. And yes, but what a shame. Those all fit together. They actually overlap in a way. There's no way he could sing that live, even if he didn't breathe, because it's overlapping. While he's saying to a waiter, he's already saying, oh, yes, but what a shame. So it all ends on the right spot. So that's a good example of it's impossible to sing it. So what does he do? He actually cuts out quite a bit and takes an opportunity to breathe. He says, what a beautiful wedding. What a beautiful wedding, says a bridesmaid too. Oh, yes, but what a shame. He cut off to a waiter completely. It, it changed the line, but he breathed right there. It's a bridesmaid too. Oh, yes, but he took an opportunity to breathe. Or you think uh, Jared Leto in 30 Seconds to Mars. I had one student who was trying to learn from yesterday, from 30 Seconds to Mars. You know, from yesterday, it's coming. And um, that song... It's really hard. It's really, one, it's, it's up high. You got to know where to breathe. If you just sing your way through it, you're never going to make it to the end. Uh, a lot of it's belting. It's it's actually really high. Okay, so what happens is you have to breathe. You have to start to maybe cut off some words. You have to know that when I sing from yesterday, it's coming. I need to breathe there from yesterday, the fear. I need to breathe again. And it's really interesting watching Jared Leto live because I look these songs up just to see what the what they're doing live for my students sake to see if the singer can even sing that live, much less where they breathe. But uh, what was interesting with that song is every song we found live, every example of him singing that live was totally different. Sometimes he yelled it. Sometimes he was super relaxed. Sometimes he was totally out of breath. Sometimes uh, he let the audience do it, you know, and the last one I found, um, it, like showing it to my student, he was in the audience and totally out of breath, giving credit to that idea that there is uh, a live show is, is more about the energy of the show and the experience of the show than it is getting the song correct. Because he was just like, From yesterday, call me yesterday. Fear. I mean, come on, that's not how the song goes. But it's approximate enough that the audience was loving it because he was in the audience and they were all singing along with him. But man, he needed to breathe because he was exhausted. It's a good example of that. And the third thing you can do to not worry about breath support anymore, or I should say not worry about having to breathe or running out of breath in a song because you know where to breathe and you have a good amount of breath support. That third thing is to increase your lung capacity. 
increase your lung capacity. To do that, you need a way to measure where you're at. So in, in, other, in other episodes, you know, I use a, a singing straw or a small cocktail straw, maybe three millimeters, three and a half millimeters in diameter, maybe about three inches long. Any longer than that, it starts to have too much resistance when you're trying to sing through it. So I try to sing through this for warm-ups. It's great. Uh, I use it to find mixed voice really fast and to kind of get into cry vocal mode and start to thin out the glottis. It's great for vocal recovery. That's what I originally found it for. You know, you've heard me talk about all this before with the, the singing straw or the crying straw and the straw exercise. And that and more. But using this for a breath measurement, it's really great because it's very consistent. If you just try to sing, hey, you could be using a different amount of breath every time to measure how long you can sing that note for. But if you just blow through a straw, like the small straw, and you're blowing through it, it um, or trying to push that air out, it's going to be a very consistent resistance every single time. So you will get a very accurate measurement to how much you're improving every time you do it. That'll help you measure your lung capacity. So how long you can hold a note. If you can do it for a certain length through the straw, if you're well balanced in your singing, you can definitely sing, whether it's light or belt, you can sing for that long too. So all you need is a stopwatch and a small cocktail straw, stirring straw. I want you to try it. Go ahead and try it. Get out a stopwatch, get out your phone with stopwatch on it, get get out your, your singing straw and go through it. Take a full breath down and behind you. So full lungs and then push it out to the very end. Don't push so hard that it tightens up your neck, but uh, you want some pressure going through that straw for sure. Uh, most people, let's say when they're really not trained in singing, they don't sing a whole lot. Maybe they're just beginning in, with singing. They last around 12 seconds. Or maybe there's some, an issue with their lungs that they have asthma or something. It usually ends up around 12 seconds that they can hold that out before it's the very end of the breath and they hit the stopwatch. Uh, most singers, those have been singing for a while, um, they have a good warm-up routine, they sing a lot, around 18 seconds, maybe just around the 20s, the lower 20s. Uh, that, that's where I see most of them get, usually around 18 seconds though. That's, that's typical. Uh, most trained singers, so they're doing a training routine regularly, I see them start to reach into the 20s, okay? And then once they start doing the breathing exercise I'm going to show you, they start getting more into the 30 seconds and above. Now, I maxed out at 42 seconds, so kind of plateaued there, and that was enough that I never run out of breath. Even if I'm jumping around the stage and I'm short of breath, I'm able to sing pretty much anything as long as I remember to breathe within the lyrics. So you're going to rarely, if ever, run out of air during a song, even if you forget to breathe in the right spot. Okay, so from there, that's just a good measurement. I want you to try that, see how long you can go, mark it down, mark down the date. Now that you know how long you can consistently sing through a phrase, let's build up your lung capacity. So for that, I suggest getting a lung exerciser. It's got a volumetric exerciser or a spirometer, uh, pretty much all different names for the same thing. It's um, it's like two tubes, two plastic tubes together. One has a good, better, and best on it with a little ball or a stopper in it. The other side has a marker for the amount of volume you have in your lungs, and it has a ball in it as well. And you breathe in. You actually inhale through this tube. It makes that ball go up because of the pressure, that negative pressure you're creating. And you're starving your lungs of air building up your VO2 max, it's building up your capacity to use oxygen better, um, but build your lung capacity. That one I've seen work with everybody. I've seen some men just use the straw and it, it worked for about 85% of them. Women, it just didn't really work at all. All they did was that, that straw exercise every day, that one uh, to test how long you can go. I have never seen it work with a woman. It's always worked with men. Well, not always, 85% of the time work with men, but the spirometer or the volumetric exercise, there's a lung exerciser with those two tubes, that always worked, always. 
And within a few weeks, you'll start to see a big difference in how long you'll be able to pick up that straw on a stopwatch and see how long you can hold a note. Um, and then you could try singing it too. See if you can balance things out really well to be able to hold a note for that long too. Now, on that volumetric exerciser, if you max it out, then I want you to purposely start using it for longer than they suggest. Just go to the end. Go to as long as you can go without passing out or with getting too lightheaded. Oh yeah, that's something else I should, I should mention. But go go as long as you can. If you get lightheaded, then be sure to place and be sure to be in a place doing it that you can either sit down or you're already sitting down. You can sit down quickly, or if you do kind of get if you pass out or you get way too lightheaded, you're gonna fall onto your bed or you're gonna fall onto something soft. But maybe sit down while doing it. But sit up straight so you can really use your lungs. If you're standing up while using it make sure you're going to be able to sit down quickly because you can get very lightheaded doing this. Then at least once a week, go back to the straw and test how long you can push out that breath. Okay. Within a few weeks, I'm telling you, you're going to see a big difference. And that extra lung capacity will start to directly affect your live performance too. So remember, breathe from the right spot. That's a pagio that's leaning into the diaphragm. So breathing down behind you and then leaning the breath through the diaphragm. Hiss out an S if you have to. Purposely place your breaths into the lyrics as well and make sure they're part of your lyrics so you're not running out of breath by the end of a phrase because you breathe as part of your lyrics, even if you had to cut off a word. And lastly, working on your lung capacity. Start building that up with a volumetric exerciser. It won't be long until you stop running out of breath while you're singing. It'll actually start working really well for you. I think you'll be very surprised, especially within a couple of months, it's going to make a huge difference. So if this has helped you, if, if you're excited about this even, make sure that you post you are. Make sure that you post that in the comments. Make sure that um, you check out Rock Singing Lessons and our team of teachers with Unleash Singer, the under Rock Singing Lessons. And get a good teacher to teach you these things, to walk you through these things. If it's not with us, find a teacher that can help you towards your goals, help you sing the songs you want to sing, and knows how to do it themselves. Okay? And uh, we'll have some more good tips along the way. Talk to you soon.